Um, you can also look at the uh, OPSYS, and it'll show PowerPC NetBSD, even if you built from another operating system. Um, you can uh, have package source build uh, in your home directory unprivileged, but create packages that will later install into system-wide user package uh, by just using the package source bootstrap script uh, to set up um, uh, your development tree in tilde slash builder slash package and uh, set the cross local base variable. Uh, local base is what, where, where the, the installation prefix where package source puts packages. Just set that to user package in mk.conf. MK in fact, actually, you don't need to do that at all. This is the default, uh, but if you wanted to set it to slash opt package or something, um, it will keep the native packages during development, during the builds, uh, separate from the path where uh, cross, uh, cross built packages get installed. Now, inside package source, there's uh, a lot of magic uh, to set up toolchain wrappers. So package source will create these symlink farms of the toolchain of CC, LD, AS, you know, obj copy, read elf, whatever. Um, it'll create symlink farms uh, it, that it puts into the dollar path environment variable um, when it builds packages. It also sets up uh, 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 GNU platform triple aliases um, that like autoconf will look for. Sets up a lot of these uh, these aliases. So, when you are running make inside, uh, when package source runs make inside uh, a, a um, uh, source tree for some upstream package, uh, what it will see when it sees CC is the cross compiler. Um, similarly, it will create symlink farms of the libraries and header files uh, for dependent packages. So, if a program depends on a library that was installed by another package. Um, packages create a symlink farm so that the, um, the package is building sees uh, exactly the right set of uh, libraries and header files. Question? So how do you deal with software that builds its own local tree? I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> that's, that's about uh, 10 or 20 slides from here. <laughs> Um, so these wrappers are not just symlinks uh, also. Some of them are, um, uh, will do some transformations on arguments. Uh, so uh, when you want to run a, a when you want to, you know, uh, uh, cross compile against a user land, um, uh, like an sort of an SDK, software development kit, uh, you, you, it'll be, it's much more convenient if you can tell GCC, hey, I have a whole installation of a Unix. Uh, it's in, you know, slash home slash wherever. Um, and that's, that's the path they want you to resolve header files relative to. Don't look in slash user slash include slash uni standard IH. Look in home desktop or whatever slash user include uh, uh, uni standard IH. Uh, and so then GCC will look, at, look for everything relative to that. Uh, that's the sys root. Um, and that's, that, that points to the cross tester you, you, that you configured earlier when you um, built a NetBSD user land, uh, cross built a NetBSD user land. Then the wrappers also do various other things. They will uh, uh, ensure the dash i and dash l arguments where the compiler looks for files at build time when it's uh, running the C preprocessor, when it's running the compile time linker to check uh, to resolve library dependencies. Um, it will also make sure that the right runtime library paths get baked into the executables, the libraries it builds, so that later on, when the runtime loader loads up uh, a, a dependent library, it will look in slash user slash package slash lib and not in slash home slash builder slash desk dir dot blah, 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 blah. Um, similarly, it will you know, uh, clean up some, some uh, library options like dash LDL, depending on uh, what OS you're on. When NetBSD, there's no LDL. On Linux, there is. And there are other package-specific transformations, um, not specific to cross-builds. They're available in the Packages Guide if you want to read about them. But uh, this is what the wrappers do. Um, now, when you want to build a, a collection of software, it's never just one program. Uh, it's always you're always going to have libraries and other and tools and other things that it, that it pulls in, so we have to be careful about uh, uh, building and running the right dependencies. Um, so, uh, so like the Tor program, for instance, um, that uh, relies on a library called libevent at runtime. So when you execute Tor on your 32-bit PowerPC network appliance, there has to be a libevent.so that the runtime loader can load. Um, so that's, that's a runtime dependency. Um, but when you're building the Tor program, it doesn't matter if on your x86 laptop or, or workstation or a server, there's a libevent.so. That, that's not, that's, that, that's not, you're not going to execute the code in that. Um, 
but it does, uh, the compiler does need a file called event.h from libevent. Um, and it, well, actually, it probably also needs libevent.so for the, the, the build time linker to, to check to resolve the library dependencies. So there's a different kind of dependency, which is build dependency. Um, and this is where uh, a, a, uh, a library has to, be, has to be available at compile time, um, uh, but installed into the destitur. Uh, so it's a, it has to be a, you know, a, a, a cross-built, like PowerPC library installed in the PowerPC destitur, not something that exists in the x86 uh, system installation. Um, on the other hand, there are other, 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 other cases where um, you, the, the program you're building uh, wants to run a tool program, like a C compiler or an XSLT processor when you're building, say, X11, um, libxcb wants to run XSLT proc to convert an XML file to a .h file at compile time. This is a tool dependency, and in the PowerPC x86 case, it has to be installed on your x86 laptop in order to build XCB. Um, there's also bootstrap depends, but that's not important. Um, so, uh, so if we're if we're on an you know on an Intel system x86 system building X, uh, X term. Uh, to run on a PowerPC thin client, if you were to do that for some reason. Uh, I'm not actually sure if there are any that have interesting graphical uh, capabilities these days, but um, uh, uh, you've got a cross-build X term, but it depends on libxcb, and that will also be needed at runtime. So you've got a cross-build libxcb, but libxcb requires executing XSLT proc, so that has to be built natively on x86. So packages will go through this dependency tree graph, and it will find, uh, it, will, it will switch over to native builds once it gets to a tool dependency, and then recursively, the, those tool dependencies, those will all get native builds for their dependencies. So, so packages will, will um, uh, make sure that the, uh, when it traverses the dependency graph, it, it cross builds or native builds as appropriately needed for, uh, as needed for the package. Um, there's a, um, uh, a subtle distinction here uh, that I mentioned earlier between build dependencies and tool dependencies. Build dependencies have to go into the cross destitur and be cross built uh, for use by a, like a, a linker or a compiler that looks at them as other inputs alongside your source code. Tool dependencies are executed on the uh, build host. Um, and they can also be configured as cross compilers themselves. Uh, with um, some of them are a, a few packages like libtool are built this way. Um, uh, when when packages packages recursively builds a tool dependency, it will set some variables target machine arch target opsys to let that package know. By the way, I actually wanted you for cross compiling a NetBSD PowerPC application, and some packages will adjust their names uh, and adjust their parameters uh, if that's if that's uh, relevant. Um, so, if you have a package uh, whose build system wants to call a tool that is not part of the NetBSD toolchain, like glib making nums. Um, this, is a, this is not part of NetBSD toolchain, but it is necessary as a tool dependency. Um, you, have to, you may have to tell it where to find that. Um, and uh, there's a few ways to do that. First, you have to set a uh, tool depends, uh, to say this package has a tool dependency on uh, glib2 tools. And then depending on what kind of uh, build system you're using, uh, if it's GNU autoconf, you have to pass an extra config argument to pass uh, the variable glibmakinums, or sometimes it'll be accv glibmakinums, or something like that. Um, with Mason, it's a similar deal, but just spelled differently. You have to set a, create a new uh, Mason binary, glibmakinums, and then uh, uh, tell it where to pass it through. And tool base, in this case, will be the place where package source um, uh, has installed native tools on the build host. So like tilde slash builder slash package, rather than slash user slash package, which is local base on the, um, on the, uh, the, the target system. Similarly, if you want to use Python, uh, many build systems call Python at build time, so you have to use tool Python bin for those. Whereas if they bake references to Python into scripts at runtime, you have to use Python bin, not tool Python bin uh, for that. And there's, there's a, a few other things like this, but the, the common theme here for you know, CMake, Mason, uh, whatever. Um, package source will create, in the case of Mason, it will create a cross config file for you. Um, this is an example that uh, I pulled out of probably GTA 2 
um, or something else that was using it. Uh, this is just generated for you. You don't, you don't have to mess with it yourself, and it, you know, it'll, it'll create it as needed according to the, to the packages, so you don't have to, you don't have to maintain a, a library of your MSON config files or anything. Um, but you'll occasionally get complications when you are trying to uh, uh, build, cross-build packages. Um, one of them is uh, this confusion about uh, build depends and tool depends, because originally package source only had one concept. Um, I, uh, about a, a decade ago, I split up the concept into tool depends. I added a new variable, tool depends. Um, before I realized some years later that actually basically every single use of build depends in package source really should be tool depends. It really is asking for a tool to execute at compile time. Uh, it's only inside the build link framework that package source really uses build depends. So uh, I, uh, last year, uh, we systematically changed all of the tool depends across package source to use build depends. Uh, but every now and then, some packages keep popping up when old package source developer doesn't realize that uh, the, 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 the name has changed. If I were doing it again, I would change the names to have, to have it the other way around or something, but it's too late now. Um, so uh, uh, an audience member asked, uh, how do you deal with a package that builds its own tool internally? Um, so package source provides a variable called native CC. Uh, which refers to the, the C compiler that is necessary to build a program that runs on the host. Um, so in the case of Nettle uh, I, that I gave earlier, uh, there's a little tool that processes some elliptic curve parameters or something that it builds at compile time and then executes at compile time to generate a, you know, some data files. Um, so uh, in cases like this, you have to tell the package that you're building, by the way, here's the native C compiler um, that you can use to, to, to do this. Uh, otherwise, if it just uses CC, uh, it'll get the PowerPC cross builder, and when it tries to execute that, it'll say SH cannot execute ELF binary gronk. Um, and uh, so th there are different conventions for how to do this. A lot of autoconf based software will, will use a variable called CC for build. Um, sometimes, in, if the software hasn't done that, we just make a local patch and package source to teach it to do that. Um, in other cases, uh, you know, the variable is named differently, C native CC or something. Uh, as soon as you have, to, you have to dig through to find what the, the, the hook is for this. It's not very well supported in the sense that it's not very, um, uh, there, isn't, there isn't a lot of uniformity in, in how software accepts it, the way that like dash dash prefix is pretty much uniformly accepted by all autocom software. But it's usually fairly narrowly scoped. Very few packages actually do this, actually require a tool to be built at compile time. And of those that do, they usually have a very limited scope for what it does. Uh, and it's e pretty easy to patch. There are a bunch of examples you can find in the tree. Um, sometimes, uh, instead of just building a tool uh, that, um, uh, with like native CC, uh, a package wants to execute its own build products. Um, this is a little more annoying. Uh, especially if the package has a lot of dependencies. Um, but uh, if it's not convenient to uh, patch the package to generate a second copy of the tool natively, then you can just have it depend on itself as a natively built package. So uh, this is a case I took from GTK2. It wants to call the GTK2 update icon cache program, which it also builds. Well, to do this, I just have uh, the GTK2 depend on itself from the same place and this looks circular, but actually it isn't because package source will, uh, this, this only takes effect when you're cross compiling, and then package source will build the native version of the package and it bottoms out there. Uh, and then you pass through the package through the, uh, via tool base and via some configure argument. Uh, the intermediate variable here isn't necessary except to fit this on a screen that has limited number of columns. Um, Another thing that uh, you'll often find in autoconf scripts uh, or CMake or, or, or what have you is uh, packages testing for the existence of files in the system. Like, does this system support devu random? Well, it's 2024. I think everything had better support devu random these days. But you'll still find a lot of autoconf scripts that are checking for it. Um, and uh, well, since pretty much everything supports DevUrenum these days, you can just tell Autoconf, yes, this supports DevUrenum. Don't even bother to check. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, sometimes you have to just pre-bake some answers in for Autoconf like this. Um, sometimes package source uh, has some existence tests, and there's still a lot of these uh, floating around. Um, 
It's just a matter of uh, uh, telling package source, no, uh, you should look under the desktop for the file you want to test the existence of, not in the host system. So this is a pretty easy, uh, easy change. You just need to go through and, and uh, uh, apply it to all of the uh, exist tests in, in package source itself. Um, Similarly, uh, many packages will try to do runtime tests. They want to build a, uh, build a program and then execute it to learn something about the system that they will later be installed on. That doesn't do very much if you're about to install something on PowerPC and you're running on x86 right now. Um, so for instance, programs want to know what the size of long at compile time is. Well, on PowerPC it's four, on PowerPC 32 it's four, and x86 it's eight. Um, so, uh, well, in, uh, one way you can do this is to um, write a program that will, uh, uh, generate a program that will fail if your guess is wrong, and do a binary search on how large the parameter is, in this case, size of long is. Uh, and it takes just a few steps to figure out what the, what the right size of long is. And in autoconf, this actually is built in, this AC check size of. Um, but you might still find some autoconf based packages that are, do runtime tests instead. Um, so you might have to patch, the, patch them to, to, to use the right thing. Um, some tests are harder to replace, so if you just know what the answer is in advance, uh, you can just bake that into the package make file, uh, like with Z this ZSH case. And then there are some packages that are just very resistant to cross compilation, um, like Perl and, well, formerly Python, um, Python has gotten a lot better since 3.10, so it just works out of the box now. Um, but Perl uh, is a big pain. Um, it is possible to cross-build Perl, but we haven't taught packages to do that yet. Um, it's going to take some more work. Um, G-object introspection, uh, yes? Um, not that I know of, actually. I think it, they just made it better all by themselves. Uh, it was a very pleasant surprise for me about a year or two ago when I looked and found, oh, hey, this just works now. Um, well, no, it didn't just work. I had to do some, had to put some machinery in place on the package or side, but the support was there in, uh, in Python 3.10, um, which is new enough that that's pretty much all I care about these days. Well, actually, 3.11 is what I use these days. Um, G-object introspection uh, is a special, so Perl, in principle, you, it, it just it wants to build a Perl to build a Perl because it, you know, it just wants to build a tool. In principle, that's not hard to deal with. It's just there's a lot of machinery in the Perl build that makes it annoying. Uh, so you could, you, you could probably bootstrap a Perl and then ask Perl's own build to use its own bootstrap Perl uh, using the same uh, you know, tool depends on itself uh, that we used for GTK2. Um, it's just that the build system is not currently wired up to do that, as far as I'm aware. G-object introspection is a special case that is extremely resistant to cross-compilation. It just hates cross-compilation. Um, the way G-object introspection works is that uh, it puts some uh, metadata about a library into the library in an executable way, so that the only way to fish it out is to write a program that calls a function in a library that returns the metadata and prints it out. You could just store it in a regular file next to the library or something, but no, that's not how geodic introspection works. Um, so I spent some time trying to see if there's a way I could, I could fish it out with like obj copy or obj dump or something just to pull the right section of the elf file out, but no, it's intermingled with everything. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nightmare. So instead I took the time to make introspection an option, a build option for a lot of packages packages so you can just bypass it. Um, Alternatively, as a workaround, this isn't, you know, uh, we haven't automated this, but as a workaround, you can build a binary package on the target system natively without using the cross-compilation stuff. Just one binary package, you cross-build all the dependencies, shift them to the target system, natively build that one package that's a problem, like Perl, and then shift it back to the build machine to cross-build everything else. Um, because you can, just, you can just get a binary package out of package source and then it's uh, you ship them back and forth. Now it's not great, um, it'd be nice if you didn't have to do that, but for a couple of cases, that's, that's currently the best we can do. Um, to fix this properly requires a lot of work. Um, some related work, OpenWRT is a much smaller package uh, repository. Um, it's Linux only, uh, you know, OpenWRT only. Um, 
and it's not, not a general purpose of package source, so um, they did a lot of good work. They got Perl cross-building. Um, maybe someday I'll get sit down and copy their effort over to package source, uh, but I haven't done that yet. Um, historically, uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, there was a system, well, it still works, uh, for using distc in package source. Uh, in this, you, still, you need a target system uh, to, to uh, run make and everything, to run the build system, but all of the compilation work, the, you know, the Clang LLVM process that needs to load in gigabytes of C++ templates, that gets shipped off to your x86 build server or whatever in a, in a cross compiler. But almost everything else runs on the uh, target system. Um, this, you know, it, it works, but it leaves a lot to be desired because it's a big pain to set up. You have to have a target system that is wired up in the right way. And it's not that much of a performance improvement. Um, for you know, C++ program files compiling them, yeah, that's a big improvement. But that's about the only case where it is a big improvement uh, because there's a lot of time that's just spent in the build system itself in make, interpreting make files and choosing actions, forking sub-processes uh, that is, it makes it not that much of a win for a lot of builds. Um, FreeBSD has another approach, uh, and I think this is how a lot of Linux systems do it too, um, which is to... Um, uh, run a native compiler in a user mode emulator um, with QMU uh, or in Linux with uh, bin format, well, with QMU, but with a BSD user on FreeBSD and with bin format MISC and, and Linux, uh, Linux user. Um, and this works. Uh, it, it doesn't create as clean a separation between the host and the target systems, um, like the way that in package source you can do unprivileged builds in your home directory and tilde slash package and produce objects that are independent of your username, your home directory, or whatever else is in there, and go into slash user package. Um, it also takes a lot of engineering effort to get the emulator working, and emulators you know, are going to be slower. Um, <coughs> it's much faster to run a cross-compiler on x86 system than to run a native compiler in PowerPC 32-bit on uh, an emulator, uh, emulated PowerPC system. But um, it's another approach that you can use, and FreeBSD has used it successfully, um, with the caveat that there's a lot of maintenance burden in keeping the QMU BSD user happy. It has been routed in FBSD. I've been meaning to take a look at it to see if I can wire it to package source, but it's a lot of work. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Some future work. Uh, so. I actually gave this talk, an uh, 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 earlier version of this talk at AJBSDCon a few years ago. Um, and I gave a list of future work. Uh, and I'm happy to say that most of it has already been done. Um, so a lot of this is now past work. Um, so cross OS compilation. Uh, well, currently it, it, it only works from other systems to NetBSD and there are limitations on it, but the machinery is there uh, with, with just one niggly part that's, that, that's going to be annoying to fix. Um, you just have to set both cross-machine arch and cross-opsys in mk.conf. Also a few other variables to say like the, the version numbers, uh, so you can cross-build from NetBSD 9 to NetBSD 10, say, uh, and Packages has a lot of different variables for operating system versions because there's lots of different variant, different schemes of versions with different variants. Like, you know, Illumos and Solaris type systems have different sets of variables for uh, uh, operating system uh, variants and versions and what have you. Um, so there's a bunch of variables you have to set here, but um, uh, you can set both machine arch and the operating system in this way. The one bit we have to fix is that uh, there's a, a, a thing called use tools in uh, package source, which is where you say, oh, this package runs autoconf, or this package, not just, not just configure, but it runs autoconf itself, or runs auto make itself. We, re, we have to rebuild the make files. Or this package uses you know, M4 or sed or, or whatever. And the same mechanism, uh, and the reason th this exists is that on many operating systems, you know, sed lives in a different directory. On Solaris, on Solaris based systems, it might be in user xpg4 slash bin slash sed. On NetBSD, it's user bin sed. And so uh, the use tools system in package source, uh, you know, hides all of that and just gives you a variable tool sed. Um, and it was reused uh, both for build time stuff and for baking paths into the resulting package. We have to split that up for the packages cross compilation. Uh, and that split hasn't happened yet. So any tools that are used at runtime with use tools, as opposed to tool depends, um, those don't work for cross OS compilation yet. 
it's just going to be some work to separate out the, the, the build time tools from the runtime well, tools using, the, you know, like where does sed live? We have to split that up for the, the build host and the target system. Um, there were some user interface improvements. It was pretty dicey to actually, you know, it was very difficult to get all the knobs set the right way. And if, if, uh, if you got anything wrong, the symptom was usually you'd notice, wait a minute, why is packages trying to build GCC 6? And then a few minutes later, you, you'd, you'd realize, oh, this is, this is fruitless. I have to, I have to, and the reason that you got it wrong was you had the wrong condition on your make file, uh, your make.conf. Make um, and uh, it used to be you couldn't send, you couldn't pass machine arch on the command line. If you want to cross build packages for a bunch of different things at once, have a script that just set, pass machine arch with PowerPC, machine arch with arch 64, et cetera. Um, and there's this manual step involving a new lib tool. Um, and that has all been resolved. Uh, so uh, this is no longer future work. This is past work. Um, this, all, this all just works now. Um, the one thing that is uh, uh, still future work is getting pbulk uh, taught to cross-build. Uh, it doesn't understand the difference between build depends and tool depends. We have to teach it to, to separate, the, separate these out and figure out you know, all that stuff. Um, I haven't done that yet, and nobody else has yet either. Um, so that is still future work. Um, other uh, uh, things that used to be a problem were that um, uh, you used to have the same path, same installation prefix for native and cross builds. Now you can have them separate. Uh, that, that all just works. Um, and unprivileged builds, uh, you know, that, 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 were, um, that, that mostly works fine, except that there are a few little issues uh, with like Chone and SUD executables. Uh, if you try to um, build and do an unprivileged package source bootstrap and then install into user package, the packages are not quite right. They might have the wrong UIDs on them, or they might, you know, SUID stuff. That's some details to be worked out. Um, but aside from that, uh, it's time for you folks to get cross-building and get the builds while they're hot. Thank you. <laughs> Question. Um, I've got a bunch of questions. I'll just do my first one. Go for it. Well, um, so here's a couple of examples um, to, to show the difference. Uh, runtime dependency is not a build dependency. Let's suppose your program forks and execs another program. It's not a library dependency. The linker doesn't have to know about it at build time. It's not a header file dependency. The compiler doesn't have to know about build time. It's just a runtime dependency. Um, so that's, uh, you'll see a lot of that in like, with like Python scripts, for instance. You don't need that at compile time. Python doesn't care. Um, in the other way, there are a few cases of build time dependencies that are not runtime dependencies. Um, now, there's more of this in systems like Debian, um, but in, in package source, uh, there are a handful of packages that provide just header files. You don't need these at runtime. You just need them at compile time to expand macros. Um, at some point, we might split library packages into development and runtime versions. Um, that would be nice for various reasons, uh, but it hasn't been done yet. So there's only a few cases of these right now in, in package source. But they, they do exist in, in, in principle. Uh, yes, another question. Well, here's another example. If you treat it as a shared library, or a shared library depends on another shared library, but you don't need a third stack to do the work. Yeah, but it depends on your tool chain. Yeah, it depends on the tool chain. Another question in the back. Uh, have you looked at ZigCC for cross OS compilation? I have not looked at ZigCC. Is that related to Zig? It is. OK. It's the, uh, their cross compiler uh, includes header files and cross compiles it for all the operating systems and uh, mm -hmm. cross language support and so forth. Yep. Cool. I can take a look. Yep. I don't know if we have gotten Zig cross compiling in packages yet. Okay. Um, but I should take a look. I saw another question. Some. Uh, in the orange shirt. Oh, sorry, I forgot to repeat for the video audience. The question was, have I looked into Zig CC? And the answer is no, I have not. But it's related to Zig, and I will take a look. Uh, in the orange shirt. Uh, is this used for building any of the binaries that built on your own? Uh, it is not yet used for. The question is, is it used for any of the uh, any of the NetBSD uh, builds of packages that go onto mirrors? And the answer is, it is not yet used for that. But I anticipate it will be used in the near future. Um, th those are. You know, 
someone has still gotten 68K machine chugging along to do bulk builds in package source. Uh, the main thing that, that, it, that, it, that it's stuck on for that is pbulk. Um, so this is, uh, you know, it, we, I do a lot of, you know, spot builds of, of packages, uh, and this, this works great for that. Um, we need to get pbulk support before we, before we do bulk builds, and that will also help you know, shake out a lot of issues with uh, packages that don't cross-build. Um, so there was another question. Yes. Uh -huh. So they don't think of things like cross-build, they don't think yep. of things like packages. They just say, oh, it's built for me. Yep. That's, that's kind of it. Um, so it so sounds like you've done a lot of this. Uh, what percentage of, you, of the work would you say is that kind of toil of uh, just trying to placate other people's build systems that didn't think of a lot of different things? Um, the question is, how much of this work is uh, toil dealing with uh, build systems of people who didn't think about these use cases? And I would say, actually, it's a fairly small fraction of the packages I've dealt with. Um, obviously, it's a larger fraction of the time spent on it. Uh, but um, most of the popular build systems these days, it, it just works. Um, like with Autoconf and with Mason and CMake and stuff, things generally just work out of the box unless the packager, unless the unless offering software author uh, went out of their way to do something silly. Um, and you, you kind of have to go out of the way to do something silly, like write a, write a, you know, a run test in your configure script. Um, Autoconf doesn't, you know, Autoconf makes it easy to not do that. Um, and similarly with uh, CMake and, and Mason. So I do encounter it from time to time, um, but uh, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's not a large fraction of things. Um, often, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, you, like I'll see one run test, uh, and okay, I can just pre-bake the, you know, the the, the answer to that, predetermine the answer to that test. Um, uh, and we, even with like Autoconf or, or Mason, um, you can, you know, it, it, the idiomatic way to do things is that there's a cache variable that you can just preset. Um, you know, software authors have to go out of the way to not provide the hooks to to uh, to, to 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 make this easy for us. Um, so. I, I, you know, I, I was kind of surprised at how easy it is for most of the packages once you have the infrastructure in place to just get the wi things wired up the right way. Um, other questions? Yes. There's one other historical entry that I think you could consider adding to the heap of related efforts uh, list. What's that? Which was MRG and work to do cross build package source where the community tests were run using Primage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, th th that's that's similar to the FreeBSD approach, um, uh, and um, uh, the, the the FreeBSD approach of, of running the the comp running the, the the build in a native emu uh, emulator. So, so in this case, we run the native compiler emulator. Mm -hmm. We ran the cross compiler on the primitive counter system that was running the native emulator. Right. Yes. So the question, which is more of a comment, I guess, uh, was uh, th th there is another ap approach that uh, uh, Matthew Green did a long time ago, which was to uh, uh, run um, uh, uh, run the uh, cross compiler until uh, you know, run everything as with cross compilers until it hits a binary that can't be run uh, natively, and then run that under an emulator. In this case, the emulator was SimH for VAX, because of course we have to make things work on VAX. Um, <laughs> uh, <coughs> Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, um, and uh, and yeah. So the, the, and and that's that's similar to um, uh, yeah. So in Linux, there's a mechanism called bin format misc that makes it fairly easy to hook that into the OS so that when you try to execute a, pro a program, and it is an elf executable for the wrong architecture, it will run QMU or something uh, with Linux user. And it'd be nice to have that. Um, we just don't have a good user land uh, syscall emulator uh, like QMU. Um, uh, it's going to take some work to make that happen. I think I'm out of time. I'm getting dirty looks from the AV people. <laughs> um, so if there are any last questions, uh, we should maybe take them outside, uh, unless there is more time than I thought. But I, I think that this is, 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 am I correct about the schedule?
Lunch is now, okay. All right, so I don't want to block any of you from lunch. Uh, so let's, let's take this outside. And I should, oh, thank you. And I should uh, walk off with my mics, right? That was the instruction.